All right, we're going to move into section 1.3 now. And in 1.2, we learned those three basic undefined terms, kind of the building blocks of geometry, points, lines, and planes. Lines are maybe one of the most common and maybe one of the most important out of those three. Now in 1.3, we go just a little bit further and we talk about something called a line segment. And as the name would imply, it has something to do with lines, which we learned about in 1.2. So let's begin with a definition right here, a line segment. I'd like you guys to put in your notes and preferably underline right here also often just goes by the name segment so if you ever hear your teacher or something in a book talk about a segment they're talking about a line segment so let's define that here the definition of a line segment simply means a portion of a line that's kind of the quick informal one right here uh, our formal definition would be just a little bit more complicated than that uh, the definition of a line segment would be the set of all, and again, here's that word we learned in 1.2, collinear points. So all points that are in a straight line, but there's a difference here between a line segment and a line. With a line now, we wrote that it extended infinitely or forever in both directions. Here we're going to say that a line segment is the set of all collinear points, we're going to say between two endpoints. And so that word there becomes important between two endpoints, but not extending past that. So I guess just like I did with 1.3, let's cheat and go down to our diagram here first. What you're going to do to draw a line segment is you're going to start with one point, and we're going to call that our end point, even though it's kind of the starting point here, and I'll call that one point M. Then anywhere else on your plane, we're going to draw a second point right now, and we're going to call that point N. Now those two points that I've created right here, I'm going to let be the endpoints of my line segment. And now to create the line segment, okay, formally, I would sit here and draw a whole bunch of points now that are collinear, meaning on the same straight line between M and N. But what I'm not going to do, don't write this in your notes because I'm going to erase it, is extend these collinear points past M and N. Because if I did that, I'd be creating a line. So let me get rid of those points. All I want to do is come up with points in purple here that are in between M and and n. And just like we saw yesterday with lines, if I do this long enough, this will stop looking just like a series of points, and it'll begin to look just like this figure right over here. So realistically, when you guys draw a line segment, you're not really going to sit there and do all of those points, even though that's technically where all this came from. You're going to draw two endpoints, m and n, and then you're just going to connect them with a straight segment here. But Unlike a line, there's no arrows at the end of a line segment. This is what it looks like. So how to name a line segment, let's go back to part B right here. This is probably simpler than what we talked about yesterday. You name a line segment by its two endpoints. Now the order does not matter right here, just like with a line. But the important thing about this is every unique line segment only has two endpoints. And that means that there's really only two ways of naming every line segment. The segment that we have drawn right here is line segment M N. And we put a symbol over the top, not with arrows like we did yesterday, just with a line segment over the top. So this is line segment M N or you can also reverse the order here and call that line segment N M. Those two things are equivalent. Either one of those would be the correct answer if I asked you what's the name of that line segment. Now, typically, we tend to be logical about this and name things from left to right. So I would think that line segment MN is the, the name you're going to see a little bit more often, but NM is just as valid. Now, what's important to understand here is there are more points on this line segment. Don't put this in your notes, guys, but there's a point right over here, sure, and we'll call that point Z. You cannot name the same line segment, though, MZ. MZ is a different line segment that only goes from here to here. So if I was asking you to name the entire line segment, 
it's got to be one of these two, but not MZ. Okay, so that is a pretty good understanding right there, hopefully, of what a line segment is, how we name it, and what it looks like. Now, this is just a fun little food for thought diagram right here. How many line segments can we name or can we find in this particular diagram? So what do we have here, guys? We have a line in blue and three points located along that line, points D, H, and S. So maybe pause this video for just a second if you're watching it on your own. See what you can come up with for your answer. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through some of the common answers that I get to this question. The first one I hear that some people laugh at but actually makes a lot of sense is zero. I've had people look at this diagram and tell me there are no line segments in this diagram here. And when you ask them why, they'll notice that there's an arrow right here and an arrow right here. And that means that this figure is actually a line and not a line segment. And that makes a lot of sense. However, what's important to understand here, guys, is that while this overall figure is a line extending forever in both directions, we can simply ignore what's happening here to the left of point D and what's happening here to the right of point S, and that this line that we had drawn does contain at least one line segment. So, zero is not the right answer here. Another very common answer that I get is two. A lot of people want to tell me that there's a line segment that goes from D to H, and you know what? They're right about that. Then they want to tell me there's another line segment that goes from H to S, and they're right about that as well. DH and HS are two distinct, meaning different, line segments. They've got a different pair of endpoints, even though they both have point H going on right there. But the actual answer to this question, guys, and this is something we've got to get used to seeing, is that there are three line segments in this figure. The two that we labeled before, DH and HS, are there, but there's also a third line segment that starts all the way over at D and ends all the way over on the right at S. So there's three different line segments right here, guys, as we look at this figure. We've got DH, this first little guy on the left. We've got HS, this second little guy. We'll kind of call that a middle size segment there on the right. And then we've got DS, which is the entire figure spanning the entire diagram. So that's going to be a common question that I ask you guys throughout the course of this chapter. When you look at a line segment right here with three named points, that's actually going to contain three line segments. All right, DH, HS, and then the whole thing, which is DS. So that's something that's going to help us with some problems we're going to see later on here. The second big concept I want to talk about isn't covered that, uh, that heavily in this particular textbook, but it's called the ruler postulate. And I wanted to mention it, first of all, because it's just a way to reinforce this word right here, which we discussed in section 1.1, and that's a postulate, sometimes also called an axiom. And if you recall, a postulate is a math mathematical statement that we accept as true even though it can't be formally proven, usually because it's pretty obvious. Well, let's look at what this statement says. The ruler postulate simply says that every line segment can be measured using a number line. And the number line that we tend to use the most often to measure the length of a segment is a ruler. Now, I thought I had a ruler here on my smart board, but as you can see, it's not really labeled with anything here, and I wish it were. Sorry about that. But if this were a normal ruler, you guys know that, well, let's just talk about inches right here. This would be one inch, and there's two, and there's three, and there's four. And I don't know how far this one goes, but that's probably good. It's implied that there's a zero right over here on one side. And what that essentially means is that if we were to draw a line segment, like O, for example, if I was going to put point G right over here, and then uh, a little bit further off to the right here, I was going to put point H. That means that we could pick up our ruler. Let's see if I can do this all at once now. We could pick up our ruler and move it so that if we put zero right on the number line here at point G, we could take a wild guess right here how long this segment was. And I'm sorry, guys, I should have actually drawn the line segment here connecting G and H. Okay, so now if I do that, we pick this thing up, we place zero at point G, and we can find here that H looks like it's about halfway between four and five. 
5. So we would say that the measure of this line segment, line segment GH, is going to be 4.5. And I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about a notation here as well. I did not leave the little symbol off here by accident, guys. I did it on purpose. Now, when you see, in fact, I should change my letters around here. When you see G and H, two capital letters right next to each other, with the line segment symbol over the top, you're naming a geometric figure. What that means right there, the way we would read that is line segment GH. That's how we would read that. However, when you see, let me get rid of all this junk, sorry guys, when you see two capital letters right next to each other, but without a symbol over the top, that means something different. What that means is the measure of line segment GH. So we want to get that difference down right here. The first way that I drew right down here, we're naming the line segment itself. But here, when you just see those two symbols right there without the symbol over the top, just the two capital letters, that means we're finding the measure of line segment GH. So what we would write in this particular drawing, the way I've made it here, is that capital G, capital H, without a symbol over the top, the measure of line segment GH is equal to, looks like about 4.5 units here, whatever it is that we're talking about. Now, this is high school geometry, guys, not elementary school and not middle school. We're actually going to do very little, maybe none, uh, picking up a ruler and actually measuring line segments. What we tend to do at this level is be a little bit more analytical about it. So let's take a look at what's going on here. What I have here, guys, up at the top is a line in blue, but you'll notice then that there's three coordinates that are given to you on this line, which makes this, to be honest here, a number line, which you guys dealt a lot with back in pre-algebra and probably a little bit more in, in Algebra 1 last year. And hopefully you know that a number line, well, because it's a line, it extends infinitely all the way to the left and all the way to the right. There's a zero in there somewhere. All the negative numbers are to the left of zero. All the positive numbers are to the right of zero. So on this number line, we have named and identified the coordinates of three points. Point A is at negative eight, B is at negative two, and point C is at positive three. And I guess that means that zero on my number line is maybe right about there, between negative two and three, but closer to negative two than it was to three. That's not hugely important. Now, what I really wanted to do right here was talk about the notation. I'm asking you guys three questions over here on the left, and the wording we want to use, and the sooner we get this down, the better we're going to do here is this. In the first one, I'm not just saying AB equals Let's read that correctly, guys. This notation right here means the measure of line segment, blah, blah, blah. So I'm asking you guys right here, what is the measure of line segment AB? What is the distance from the left end point right over here to the right end point here? How far is it from negative 8 over to negative 2? Now, some of you are going to look right at that and say, boom, here's the answer, and you're going to get it right. Others among us are going to struggle a little bit, especially given the fact that these are negative numbers, and that tends to confuse people a little bit. So the quick, I don't even want to call this a formula, you guys, but the quick thing I want you to remember here is this. Just jot this down in your notes here, right endpoint minus left end point. And if you can remember that, you're in good shape. But the order is important. We always want to go right minus left. So if we look at line segment AB, which is right here, the coordinate of its right end point is negative 2. And we're going to subtract from that the coordinate of its left end point, which is right here at negative 8. Now you got to be careful. We're subtracting a negative number. So putting parentheses around that is always a good idea. I don't like where I put that. Let me move that down. So I guess I'm going to keep going on this same line. And I'm hoping we can do this without a calculator here, guys. Minus a negative number just becomes plus. This is now negative 2 plus 8. And what do we get there? Positive 6 now for the measure of line segment AB meaning that it's six units now to go from negative eight to negative two. Second question, what is the measure 
of line segment BC. B is at negative 2, C is where it ends at 3, so again, we're going to do right minus left. So here we go. The right end point of BC is right here at 3, minus the left end point, which is right here at negative 2, and 3 minus negative 2. We turn that into 3 plus 2, and that's probably an easier question to answer than the last one was. That's going to be 5. Now, I'm kind of curious what you guys think right here. This first gap we said was 6 units. This second gap right here is 5. I've had a lot of people in class stop and say, wait a minute, that doesn't look right to me. That 6 there looks a lot bigger than this 5 does, not just one unit off. Well, that's an important rule, kind of a tenet, uh, something that we follow in geometry that we got to get used to. Never trust your eyes. When you have numbers right here, this, remember this is called analytic geometry, the numbers that we come up with are more important than what your eye and your brain tell you is probably logical. So don't trust your eye, trust the numbers. We're going to say that a lot throughout the course of the year. And finally, the third line segment would be the biggest one here, the one that starts all the way over at A and ends all the way over at C. So once more, let's remember right end point minus left end point. Our right end point is at C, which has a coordinate of 3, and we'll subtract the coordinate of our left end point A which is negative 8. So that's going to become a 3 plus 8, and we're going to end up with 11 for the answer to that third question. However, I wonder, and I should have asked, I bet a whole bunch of you guys probably could have told me already that this answer was 11 just based on the fact that the answers to the first two questions were 6 and 5. So I'd ask you guys, do you think that this 11 is logical? And I would hope most of you would say yes, because a lot of you would notice that if we add the first two distances or lengths together, that ends up getting us 11, which makes total sense to a lot of us. And if that's you, good, then you understand this next concept we're about to talk to, uh, about, which is called the segment addition postulate. Now there's that word again, a postulate. It's a simple idea in math that we know is true and we accept it as true, even though it can't be formally proven. And here's what the segment addition postulate says. If points A, B, and C are collinear. And I think you can see from this diagram here, guys, that all three of those points appear to be on the same straight line. So that's good. If they're collinear, then the segment addition postulate, let's use the words here, guys, says that we can add together the measures of the line segments and get a true statement. The segment addition postulate tells us that the measure of line segment AB, notice guys, I am not putting the segment symbol over the top. We're talking about numerical measurements here. The measure of segment AB can be added to the measure of line segment BC, and together that's going to get us the measure of the big outer line segment, which is AC. So AB plus BC is equal to AC, but that is only true if those three points are collinear. So I'd like you guys to have that in your notes. I think that's good information to have, but I'd also like to give you something much easier to latch on to here, guys. Kind of the, the dummy down version right here um, of this particular postulate, and that would be the following. And I'd love for you guys to write this down as well, because I think this is helpful here too. In a diagram such as this, we're going to take little segment plus the second little segment. There are usually two smaller ones. And together, those two little segments added together are going to equal the big segment. So if we can latch on to that idea there, guys, little segment plus little segment is equal to big segment, I think we're going to do, uh, do a really nice job of setting up the equations that we're going to need to do later on in this chapter. And it's a good skill to develop because that's what we do a lot in geometry. We take something verbal, like in this case a postulate, or it could be a theorem as well, and we try to translate that into a mathematical statement right here. And